Hello everybody, this is Karma Killed the Cat, and welcome to your 23rd Lua 5.2 tutorial. In this video, we'll be going over the operating system library, so let's get started. So, as you may be able to guess, the operating system library lets us uh, execute certain commands that have to do with uh, operating system functions. So, the first one is os.time, and os.time takes a table that has a specific format, and it returns the current time or the time in Unix based on the table you give it. So, let's see OS dot time. So let's give this a table, and it has certain fields that we have to give it, or we don't have to give it, but that will change the return value. There's year, so let's set it to roughly the current date. So it's 2015. Month equals six. It's June day equals seven hour equals we'll say one and then we can get a little bit more specific we can say min equals uh, 14 and sec I kinda have to guess on this we'll say equals 30 and then we can also say is DST which means is daylight savings time and it is not, so is DST equals false. So this is the full table that you can give os.time and what the os.time function will do now when we execute it is it will return the Unix time for the corresponding value we've given it, so roughly the current Unix time. And if you don't know, Unix is the Unix time is just a huge clock that's been counting by seconds since uh, sometime in the 1970s. So uh, this will return the amount of seconds since that time in the 1970s uh, of this uh, time that we've given it here. So if we run this, we get 143365 So that is the Unix time of this time. And we can also leave out certain values. We don't really need to give it is DST. Since we don't really know the seconds, we can leave that out. So run this, we get a slightly lower value. We can get rid of minutes if we don't really care about that. We get an even lower value. We get rid of hours. We get a lower value. And days, even lower value. Oh, actually I guess you have to give it day. So day equals seven. So this is the minimum amount of information you can give it. You have to give it the day, month, and year. But any of the other values like hour, minute, second, and is DST, those can all be left out if you don't need that level of specificity. So the next function is called os.date, and it kind of does the opposite of os.time. Spelled that wrong. os.date. And what this function does is it takes a format string. I know you're all excited to learn more format codes and a Unix time, and it'll, it'll convert it back into some uh, higher level date. So uh, I'm going to pause here, write out all the format codes, and then we'll go over the function and then go over what each of the format codes do. And I promise you it's much simpler than the format codes in the string library. All right, so here are all of the codes. So uh, first we're going to go over the last one here, which just says table. And it's the, I just wrote table because it's kind of hard to explain in writing. So the star t command, so we give it the os.date function star t, and then we give it a Unix time, and this is the current Unix time, or the current Unix time about a minute ago. Uh, so that's what the os.date function takes, it takes our format string, and then the current, or whatever Unix time you want to have converted. And the star t will return a table that has all of the fields that we would give to os.time, plus a few extra ones. So we actually can't print this. Say t equals then we'll have a generic for loop. So for kv in pairs t print k and v and now if we run this we get second 45 the year is 2015 it is dst is true I don't think it's daylight savings time. I may be wrong. Uh, day is 7. Weekday is 1 because it's Sunday. Min is 25. Month is 6. 
uh, Year Day, which is what Y Day stands for. It's the 158th day in the year, apparently. I didn't know that. And the hour is 13, which is true. It's 1 o'clock. So uh, you can see that most of these are the fields that we would give to OS.time, and it adds weekday and year day just as extra information. So that's what the star T uh, command to OS.date will give you. But any other format string will return a string that is any part of the string that isn't a format code, and then any part of the string that is a format code replaced with whatever the format code stands for. So we can go back to just printing this. So we print OS.date, and we can get rid of 4KB in pairs. So before we show an example, I'll just go over in slightly more detail than this what each of the format codes does. So percent %A is an abbreviated weekday, so like MON, uh, TUS, WED, and so on, just the abbreviated weekday for each day of the week. And then percent capital %A is the full weekday name, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and so on. Percent %B is the abbreviated month, and percent capital B is the full month, so DEC versus December, APR versus April, and stuff like that. Percent %C is the date and time, so this is the uh, current date and time when I wrote this, so uh, it'll give you give it to you in this format, uh, 24 hour clock notice. Then percent lowercase d is the day of the month between 1 and 31. Percent h is the hour on a 24 hour clock, so between 0 and 24, or per, between 0 and 23. Percent capital I is the hour on a 12 hour clock, so between uh, 1 and 12. Percent J is the day of the year from 1 to 365. Percent M is the minute between 0 and 59. Percent lowercase m is the month, or the number of the month, between 1 and 12. Percent C will either give you AM or PM, so it's 1 o'clock PM right now, but if it was 8 o'clock AM, it would return AM. Percent capital S is the second between 0 and 59, actually. Percent lowercase w is the weekday number between 0 and 6, which uh, represents Sunday through Saturday. Percent x is the date, so like 6, 7, 15 is the current date. It'll give it to you in that format. Percent capital X is the time, again, 24-hour clock. Percent lowercase y is the two-digit year, so like 15, 98, 99, 14, stuff like that. And percent y is the full year, so 2015. And then percent percent is escaping the character percent sign. So let's give uh, an example here. So say today is a, um, we'll go weekday, percent lowercase w, in, and then month, uh, let's see, percent capital D, Ca capital B, sorry, percent capital B, and period. So this will say today is whatever day in the week it is in whatever month it is. So if we run this, we get today is a zero in June. Looks like I chose the wrong one. I sure did. Um, it is percent capital A. I didn't look at the full thing there, sorry. Here we go, today is a Sunday in June, which it in fact is. So that's how the os.date function works. Um, it returns a string and then replaces all the format codes with uh, what they represent with this uh, current Unix time. And I don't, I'm actually not sure how to get the exact Unix time like of the, that like that the program's running in now. I'm sure it's pretty simple, I just can't think of it right now. But if you just Google current Unix time and go to the first website, you get the current Unix time. So that's how I got it. And I'm sure there's some way to do it just with code, but I can't think of it right now. So the next function is a lot more simple. It's called os.clock, and the way it works is it just returns, uh, it has no arguments, and it returns the uh, running time in seconds of the program. So uh, if this is usually used in benchmarking, so if we were to say x equals os.clock to capture the starting time of the program, and then we were to say uh, just for i equals 1, count to say 10 million, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, do, uh, what should we do here? We will just say i equals i, some stupid command, 
Um, and end. Actually, just to make sure that this isn't, I don't think Lua can do this, but just make sure. Uh, I'm doing this because in a lot of languages like C++, uh, a stupid command like this will get taken out by the compiler, and I don't think the Lua interpreter can do that, but just in case it can, uh, just another stupid expression like this will stop the compiler from doing that. So basically all we're doing is setting i to i minus 1, so setting i to i minus 1, and then adding 1 to that, so i minus 1 plus 1 equals i. So just some stupid useless command, but we're doing it 10 million times, so it should take some significant amount of time. And then we will print uh, the amount of time this took, so os.clock, again, minus x. So what we're doing here is we're saying uh, the elapsed time of the pro or the elapsed time of this for loop will be os.clock, so the current time in seconds that the program's taken to run, minus x, which is the starting time of the program. So if we run this, we get 0 0.119. So counting to 10 million takes 0 0.119 seconds in total. And actually, since this is the first command in the program, we can actually probably just get rid of this and we'll get the same value. Yep, 0 0.131. It'll be diff slightly different each time, but it's a negligible difference. It's just because uh, the computer's taking slightly longer to run it because of other processes that are running and whatever else. Also, the speed of your computer will affect it. But that's irrelevant. Uh, again, the os.clock function just returns the amount of time the program's taken to run so far. And really, the main use for it is benchmarking. So if you want to see how long something will take, like an algorithm or something, you could use this. The next function is called os.execute, so os.execute, and it takes a string and it executes that command, the whatever string you give it, or it tries to execute the string you give it, as a system command. If you're familiar with C and C++, this is the exact same as the system function. So, let's say make directory, uh, we'll just call it folder, because I'm not creative. So if we run this, nothing happens, but if we go to the place where I have the file in my computer, uh, we get a new folder here that's empty. And just to prove that I didn't have it here before, we'll delete it, and run this again, and it comes back. So you can create a folder, and you can pretty much do anything, oops, you can do anything that you can do with the system function in C and C++, and any command you can execute through the console in Windows, Linux, Mac, whatever you have. So, the one that's used most, uh, print hello. Uh, the one that's used most is called the pause command. So, os.execute pause, and print hello again. I'm actually not sure what this is going to do in this IDE. So you see we get, in the console we get hello, and then press any key to continue. And the reason it's saying press any key to continue is because this pause command pauses the program. So if we press any key, then we get hello again. Uh, and in this IDE you actually have to hit enter, not any key. Uh, in the console you just actually hit any key. So we get hello again after... Uh, the system pauses. So that's the command that you'll use most. It's good for debugging, but uh, you can also use any command you can execute through the console in your current operating system. So the next two variables aren't very useful, so we're not going to spend much time on them. Uh, the first one is os.getenv, and this just takes a string, and it returns the value of any process environment variable that you give it in the string. So uh, I don't, I mean, I don't really know if there are any process environment variables in this program, but if there are, you just type it in and uh, in the string and it will, the function will return that. And the next function is os.setLocale, and this also just takes a string, and the string is the locale code that you want to set it to. So, uh... Uh, there is, I guess, I-S-O, I'm just reading this out from the book, because 
I don't have iOS or uh, locale code memorized. 8859 and 1. And then as an optional second argument, you can give it the types of locale things you want to change. There's collate, which controls the alphabetic order of strings, C type. Uh, it controls types of characters, like what's a letter, what's a number, what's a punctuation mark. Monetary is money, doesn't have any kind of effect on Lua, so it's completely useless. Numeric controls how numbers are formatted, so like uh, if you want to say 12.2, in the U.S. or really any European country, or most European countries, I should say, say 12.9. Uh, in some South American countries, you would say 12 comma nine, or it's not nine, 12 comma nine. The comma just replaces the decimal point. So that's numeric. Time controls how date and time is formatted. So like whether this is June 7th or this is June 7th. Just small changes like that. And all is just all of those. Oh, and then there's also time, which controls how time is formatted. So you just give it this, and then you give it one of these. So we'll say numeric. And this will change the program's locale so that it follows uh, whatever format you give it here. Uh, this is not very useful. Usually people can understand the slight differences between locales and also it has a very high chance of uh, breaking your programs if you're executing Lua code through strings so I wouldn't recommend using this uh, I really don't know how to use it very much uh, but if you do need to use it you can look up locale codes for different places but again not very useful and I wouldn't recommend using it so that's all for this video it was actually a much shorter video I think than the last few which is nice so, in the next video, we'll be going over the debug library, which is also going to be a pretty short video. And after that, we'll have one tutorial to kind of go over a few miscellaneous functions and uh, constant values and stuff like that. And after that, we'll move on to the C API. So, look forward to that, and I'll see you in the next video.